My name's Kesaya Noda, and this is called Pilgrimage. You won't be the same after this, the surgeon said several times. You won't be the same. Now I look back and wonder at my lack of reaction. Never once did I ask him, how will I be different? May 2016. My tongue hurt. I felt a sharp pain on the left side of my tongue. The pain grew worse. The left side of my tongue swelled. Sometimes when I was chewing, I caught my tongue between my teeth and half screamed from the shock that shot through me. Sometimes it happened when I was talking. The pain grew worse. Was it caused by my braces? I reluctantly consulted with staff at my orthodontist's office. Their intervention didn't help. More pain. Again reluctantly, I tried my dentist. More pain. Back to the orthodontist. More pain. I stopped eating solid foods. I blended canned green beans and cooked rice to a mush. Back to the dentist, more pain, on to an oral surgeon who suggested a biopsy. Finally, after a desperate stop at a freestanding urgent care facility, my husband and I left for a month-long trip to Australia and New Zealand. I remember the intense joy of each day as Chris and I traveled into New Zealand and Australia. We walked on white sand, marveled at wild cockatiels and tiny penguins, hiked through rainforests. We sat up at night talking and singing with friends. We traveled on trains and slept in an eco-lodge that drew solely on solar power. Only after we came home and the pain returned in greater force did I return to the oral surgeon to have a biopsy done. One week later, Chris and I sat in the car in front of the surgeon's office. This will be a dividing point, won't it, I said. If I have cancer, there will be a before and an after. We're between the two right now. I'll go consult someone else if she can't tell us what the problem is, I thought, expecting she would have no answer. The oral surgeon apparently did have an answer. She was kind. She was smiling. We've gotten the results back from the pathologist, he said. Actually, we're seeing more excitement in your cells than we like to see. We're seeing more activity. Your cells are overactive. You have overactive cells. Overactive? You mean I have cancer? I asked. And that was that. Indeed, she said, I had cancer. Chris's eyes filled with tears. His face flushed red. I asked a few questions, and we numbly turned to leave the office. You'll be fine, the oral surgeon said, hand on my shoulder. This is a straightforward cancer. I'm recommending an excellent surgeon. You'll have the operation. He'll, he'll probably get all the cancer, but if not, you'll have radiation, and then you'll go on and have a wonderful, wonderful life. This will be completely behind you. You'll go on to a great life. Stars and swirls and cloudless moons ahead, she seemed to say. I, looking back, I marvel at how simply she seemed to paint the treatment and how many times I have written the word pain. Why did I accept the pain? My husband had to insist before I made any of my appointments, and when I returned from them, he asked what I'd been told. My vagueness exasperated him. Finally, he insisted on going with me each time so he could hear from myself. I see now in myself a long history of ne self-neglect, so I bore my pain, and while I asked about it, I didn't ask too hard. If I'd ever had a daughter, I would never have treated her as I treated myself. I wouldn't have treated any person or being the way I treated myself. June 2016. Without realizing it, I have slipped into using the first person plural. We haven't seen the doctor yet, I say. We don't know what he'll say. We? Everywhere I go, Chris goes with me. This began when he insisted on accompanying me into every treatment room, whether at the doctors or the dentist. Since then, I have never gone alone. Yesterday, at desk 2 J, the reception area for radiation oncology appointments, I saw a young man, rod thin, holding his cell phone in his hand. He was waiting for the attention of the receptionist. 
His upper body seemed sunk into his hips, which were as skinny as a young boy's. Solitary at the counter, he was silent. No one in the room looked his way. I wished I could have thought of something to say, some way to reach out, to touch him, give him something. Maybe he didn't mind his solitude, but what, what if he did? If he turned my way, I could have smiled. I could have said good morning and invited conversation or at least made light of our joint travails through a commiserating remark. I'm here too, I could have said, but I saw no opening and I didn't know how to gently make it. Perhaps it was, be it was best he's not me. I saw him through the lens of my own past and present. I used to seek solitude. I thought I would feel better being alone. Now come, Chris comes with me, and I say, we. Oui.